Hi, I'm Randy Simmons and welcome to Eye on Art. In today's segment, uh, we're going to be at Working Artist Studio. We're going to meet Charlotte Irwin and Frida Fairchild. We're going to check out some of their printmaking work and also talk about their upcoming workshop and the process that goes on behind the workshop and their artwork. So thanks for joining us. We're inside Working Artist Studio with Charlotte Irwin, and Charlotte, this is uh, the first piece you're going to show us. So you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your artwork and your process? I'd be happy to. Um, this is the latest piece that I have done, and so that's why it's first. You know, they're always you're always in love with the latest piece. Um, I'm a printmaker, but I do an unusual process in that I print on water, so it's called hydroprinting. This technique here. Um, I have several layers of imagery built up. What I usually do is um, start with, the simplest way to explain it I think for people would be, is I, as a painter, that's where I began, I float a painting on the water and then I contact print it on the paper or fabric, whichever way I'm working. This piece, the first image that was on here, I actually had my painting on the surface of the water and I had some hollyhock leaves that I had pulled from the garden and I put the hollyhock leaves down onto the surface of the painting and I got these ghosted images back here which at that point in time were white. In fact you can see the little Japanese beetle bites all over the hollyhock leaves. So these you can kind of see these ghosted hollyhock shapes in the background. And after that, you know, I looked at it a while and then I overprinted it, um, which gave a tone to all the hollyhock leaves. They, you know, they began to be more pastel. And then maybe overprinted it a couple more times with some imagery that I call my little plant souls. Um, recently, I've been working a lot with leaf shapes and floral shapes. Mm -hmm. And that's accomplished. It's interesting. Some, some people, you know, you, you can't paint, of course, with a brush on the surface of water. But my tools, and you'll see them later when we go up in the studio, my tools are eyedroppers and whisks and tiny little bamboo skewers and chopsticks. And so I'm, I'm floating paint, and those are actually what I'm basically drawing into and, and getting the manipulation of the shape that I want. So the print goes where I want it to go. I've seen a little bit of your process in action. And so you literally have a, a little tub, a little tray of water mm -hmm. uh, filled with maybe a, an inch, inch and a half, a couple of inches of water. And you're using the, uh, the surface tension of the water and you're literally dropping eye droplets of dye, colored dye, right. onto the surface. So the surface captures the inks and then you manipulate the inks. Except they're paint. Everyone thinks it's ink or it's okay. oil paint, but it's actually very thin fluid acrylics. And the whole basis of why the process works, there's science going on there. It's, you know, it's the surface tension and the viscosity of the bath, it's the water as mm -hmm. we call it, the bath. The bath is a little thicker than the paint because I have thinned them out so much. Right. You know, so it's really, it's like a very thin thing interacting with something that's a little thicker. And it's real challenging. Um, like I said, I started as a painter. My, my formal training is as a painter. But, you know, years ago in art school, I was doing something very similar to this process in terms of painting. So I've kind of rotated back to my roots. When I was in, in college, I was doing these huge series. This was the 70s. So I was taking these big six by eight canvases, lying them in the floor, flooding them with water, and then pouring oil paints into them and manipulating with feathers and sticks and tools, handmade tools, wow. to get this swirly kind of abstracted work. So then I found the process in the, in the 90s um, of doing it and getting it onto paper or fabric, but it, it's kind of bringing me back around to what my large oils used to look like. I love it, I love it. It's a really fascinating process. Uh, and I've noticed during the workshop that you can print on anything. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty much like you're using a, a really good archival paper. I'm sure you just rest the paper or the material like a scarf or a piece mm -hmm. of cloth onto right. the surface. And with the help of another person, you lift that piece off and the colors transfer to the paper. Right. Just and, act like a magnet. And hence stick. you have like a, a mono print, mm -hmm. more or less. So you can never have the 
same print twice. Exactly. All of these, all of the marbling, is, it is impossible to accomplish the same thing twice. Uh, you know, there, that is why I like the challenge of it. Even when mm -hmm. I do the traditional, there is a lot of traditional patterns, marbling patterns, um, for book artists. And my husband is a book binder. And even when I'm making papers to use, for him to use as his end sheets, and following traditional steps, no two are ever alike. It's always monotypes. And I just layer them up. The process for me has always been to what I call integrate um, I've always been a mixed media artist too, so it was really simple for me to move from just pulling one image on a piece of paper to trying to integrate it with a lot of different techniques, which is something we're going to talk about right. in terms of the workshop. I wanted to show this one first because this is all just a straight hydroprint. There's four of them on this one piece of paper, you know, but there are a lot of other things that you can do. Um, one thing I do is to uh, draw imagery between layering of, of prints. Wow. So, and then there's also then other types of printmaking that can be integrated into the layering of the prints. But none of my prints, I shouldn't say none of my prints, some prints are perfect, just one pass and you have it and you'll never make it again and it doesn't need to go anywhere. But most of my major works, let's put it that way, most of my major works have, have been integrated with either drawing or more printmaking or several, several different techniques, like even even uh, floating the hollyhock leaves on on the bath would to a traditional marbler would just be like, what is this woman doing? But I don't approach it that way. Uh, you know, I approach it as fine art, uh, not as craft. Right. Let's see another piece. Okay. And tell us about this work, Charlie. Um, this piece really embodies what I mean by, about an integrative uh, piece. In this case, I have used handmade paper because it's extremely strong. Even uh, Most of the time I work on a heavy printmaking paper or watercolor paper. But this handmade paper, I have gessoed it to give it even more body because I know it's going to go in and mm -hmm. out of the, the bath so many times. And I have collaged, I call these my glue moons, it's not, they're not really <laughs> glue, but I've always been drawn to moon imagery, so it's um, like gel medium. So that's actually back there in relief, and there's some gilding back there, the gilding of the gold leaf you can see showing through. So that's kind of where the print, it was, a, it was just a blank piece of gessoed paper. I toned my gesso a little bit, and it had the, the white blue moon and some gilding running through it. And then I began to pull um, images. So I made a painting and I printed and I looked around. And I, I work intuitively. I, this piece did not have a plan other than the moon. And I wanted a little gold showing through somewhere. And as I worked through the layers of drawing and then printing and drawing and printing, this, this imagery appeared. And once I began to get the face structures, and this mountain lion and things. Then I began to direct it. I put in a sky or, you know, and I draw with litho crayon um, in between passes because that will not come off in the bath. Uh -huh. So it's a combination of acrylic paint, you know, and, and the, um, the black line work and the glue moon. And this piece probably, I think, it's called Jesse and the Moon and it got to a certain point for me and I thought, it's done. I don't know who those people are. But they're there, and um, it was, I think, printed and manipulated or drawn into 12 times. Wow. So this truly is a mixed media piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can go so many different places with that. And then, um, you know, the traditional printmaking could have also been one of those layers. You know, but not in this particular piece. I'm kind of showing, you know, the first piece was just a straight hydroprint. And here we have integrated some drawing and some relief and, you know, even some gold leaf into the image mm. purposely. It's beautiful. Thank well, you. Well, thanks for sharing this with us. All and right. let's talk about Frida's work. Okay. And here with me right now is Frida Fairchild, and we're going to talk about some of her printmaking work as well. And that's uh, Charlotte being a prop there in the, in the background. Thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> okay. 
This piece that I brought is using uh, several examples of traditional printmaking, but in a non-traditional way. I started as a painter, like Charlotte, but along the way I became enamored of printmaking. It's so exciting because there's so many different possibilities that you can come up with with printmaking. And so I've used it a lot in many different forms. And this one started out as a quilt. That means that, you know what a quilt is here in Paducah. It's a traditional <laughs> drunkard's path pattern on the back. On top of that, I did etching. And some of the etching is photo etching, and some of the etching came from a plate that I did by starting a drawing or a painting. Uh, this, for example, is a photo etching on silk organdy of my mother as a child and her, and her small sister. Back here is another photo etching of one of my ancestors. This started as a drawing, which I transformed into a plate. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, this part is embroidery. On top of this silk, there is an abstract pattern of pure texture, and that's a relief print. So we've got photo etching, intaglio etching, relief print, and the rose thorns here were another relief print. They were actually cut out of a stencil and rolled with the ink and then put on the silk. So I get the layers, and my layers are physical rather than Charlotte's layers, which were the paint on top of right. the paint. Mm -hmm. And I love that ability to see image through image. It brings a bit of mystery and so forth. All right. Well, this is a really interesting process. You have so much going on and it certainly expands upon the traditional ideas of, uh, of quilting. You, you, can, you, you refer to this as a quilt. And uh, it is technically a quilt because it's pieced of different, right. different parts. But you can print on things that you wouldn't believe. You can print on wood, on metal, on fabric. So you're not just the paper is not the only thing you can use. Okay, and in this work? This piece is called Ascension. And I've used, again, traditional printmaking techniques. I've created plates for each of these areas that you see, and I've printed layer on top of layer using plate on top of plate. The dragonflies are a form of relief printing that's all dug out of wood. So I wow. cut the little shapes in dragonfly shape and then carved out all of the little uh, areas there that don't print. There's a bit of silver uh, foil in the back. And this is an intaglio print on top of another intaglio print. And these plates I use over and over again in many different combinations and forms. It's not traditional in the way that I use traditional plates, in mm -hmm. that I don't usually do additions, making an image and doing it many, many times. That's how printmaking used to work. I use a plate and it's almost like it's part of my library of different images that I can combine in many different ways. And the next piece that you see is going to use this plate but it'll be in a very different way. Well, that's a really cool idea, having a, a library, a collection of, of plates that you can reuse and, and other imagery, sort of recycling the image right. in a sense. Well, that's really cool. Let's look at another piece. Okay. Well, as I promised you, we would look at another piece using the very same plate that was used in the last piece. And this is work in progress. It isn't finished yet, so you get to see how I sort of manipulate and combine pieces. Remember the area in the dragonflies that was printed, uh, I believe, with blue on rose? This is actually a bit of texture that I got from snakeskin that I created wow. a plate from. So it's used here with the, the gold. And I've also incorporated some marbling. I used to marble many years ago. And when I moved to Paducah and met Charlotte, I got interested in it, involved in it as well. So this is a combination of what Charlotte does and what I do. And some of the things we'll be doing in the workshop are in here too. This is a, a 
nature print, and this also is a nature print. We use an actual piece of uh, textured leaf or string or whatever and use that as your plate. And this was done with the roller and then pulling something through that to create it, and that's mm -hmm. a monotype. So this one piece has intaglio printing, relief printing, um, aqueous printing or hydro printing, as well as uh, overlays of other prints. Oh, it's such a rich work of art. Thank you. It's incredible. It's very beautiful. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And we're going to look at some collaborative efforts as well between Charlotte and Frida. This piece is a collaboration. Uh, Charlotte and I worked on it together. Um, we have very different kinds of work, but there's an underlying spirit to our work that we thought is very similar to each other. And we decided it would be fun to try collaborating. And we did it in an unusual way, perhaps. Instead of both of us working on it at the same time, we gave each other a piece. Charlotte would give it to me. I would go home and work on it. I would bring it back, and she would work on it. So we weren't doing it as a committee. We were doing it individually, <laughs> and we trusted each other. There's a lot of trust here because I know that when she finished it and brought it back to me, I would like what she'd done to it. And this piece here came from mine. This is a bit of Charlotte's. Underneath this piece is a bit of Charlotte's, and what's on top here is very, very transparent Japanese paper. It's so thin, it's, it looks kind of cobwebby. And then on top of that is another piece of Charlotte's. And one of us decided to stitch on it, and I frankly don't remember who decided to do that. But we both use uh, stitching and sewing techniques uh, sometimes in our art. And sometimes we both uh, think of ourselves as fiber artists, so it's natural to incorporate that into printed piece. Well, the whole piece flows very nicely. I mean, there's not like one, anything unique standing out. Your all's styles are, are so, so they work together so well. That right. It's, it's so nice. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, we're going to uh, go over the processes that they're going to be using in their upcoming workshop. For this next segment, Charlotte and Frida won't be needing me. I'm going to let them do all the talking. Uh, they're going to be talking about their processes that they're going to be uh, showing their students in their upcoming workshop. So I'm out of here. We're up in Charlotte's studio right now, and I'm going to show you some of the preparation that has to happen before we do this type of printmaking. This is a print, and this is a print that I have done with traditional printmaking techniques, but I wasn't happy with them. And frequently, when I'm not happy with something, I think, okay, what can I do to make it work better for me? So I'm going to try marbling on top of them. Now, if I did not prepare the paper, the paint would slide right off. So I have to spray it. And with paper, you don't have to dip it and get it really, really wet. You just need to spray it and sponge it off, and it's going to be just a slight coating. ready. Charlotte, however, has to do a different kind of preparation when working on cloth. You want to tell them about that, Charlotte? Um, this, piece of, uh, this piece of fabric uh, is the size of this tank, but what I have to do is uh, tear my yardage, I hand dye my fabrics, but the most important thing is it also has to be soaked into the alum water. It's aluminum sulfate. It sets up a little bit of a caustic reaction that makes the paint stick to either fabric or paper or tennis shoes, gourds, uh, wood objects. Again, talking about this process, you can you can get this on just about anything that you like that you'd like to um, to marble. The way I'm set up in the studio to do the demo today is this is called a scarf tank and or a yardage tank. It holds about 16 gallons of size, and I, the size is the water that I float the paints on. And you can see that it's just a little bit uh, thicker than water should be. It's kind of the consistency of milk, and I add a methyl cellulose powder to thicken my water slightly. At the same time, I have added 
water, distilled water, and a fabric setting medium to my paints so that they are very, very thin. Even though they're fluid acrylics to begin with, I thin them out even more so. Um, so we're, as I was explaining downstairs, it's basically a surface thing. You know, the paint is thinner than the bath. We have a few tools that we use that we talked about downstairs. This is a broom corn whisk, and everything in marbling starts from a dot, okay? That is the traditional thing is called, a, it's a stone. So I can throw many, many droplets of paint onto the surface with one of these, or I can use an eyedropper and just put one drop where I want it. And then my favorite tools are these little bamboo skewers. Um, and that's what I use to manipulate and get the shapes that I want. So we're going to pull, as they say in the, in the printmaking world, we're going to pull a print, aren't we, Frida? Yeah. Only it's going to be on fabric. I do a lot of wearable arts, um, do a lot of silk scarves and, and pieces of uh, fabric that can be made into accessories. So we're working on cotton today. And the first thing that one always does is break the surface tension of the water, which I use newspaper for. I have a wonderful neighbor who takes three newspapers and she recycles them all over here. This is called skimming the bath. And I'm gonna lay that onto the surface of the tank all the way across. And I'm clearing any little dust mites or motes or critters that might have occurred in the tank since yesterday. And I come around and I'm also breaking the surface tension. Alright, so I'm just pulling that slime over the edge and getting rid of it. Okay, this I'm going to um, apply some paint now. And I like to put down a ground color for my work so that it has some dark definition. I'm going to use blue in this case. So you can see as I have loaded the whisk with the paint and then I just tap, tap, tap all over the bath. And that gives me floating droplets of color. We also have some little whisk critters that have gotten in there. But this is a demo, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to use this skewer and pull those little stones, the little droplets, back and forth, stretch them out more into streaks. So I have sort of a black background of blue. Okay. Now I think we will use some eyedropper things happening here. And I'm just coming down the surface of the tank laying kind of some random stones of purple. And you can see the paint spread. It takes about, oh, about a few seconds for the paint to get out to where it needs to be. Usually about a three inch circle is good. You want to give it time to disperse because otherwise, if you rush it, the paint would sink to the bottom. That's the great challenge of marbling, is you're, you're not, like as a painter, I was always pretty much in control of everything, you know. You know, with this printmaking process, you're not necessarily in control. You're working with, you know, the environment, the day, the humidity, the temperature, how your paints want to behave. You're sort of a co-creator, a friend of mine that's a marbler coined that term. She calls herself a co-creator when she's marbling. So now I think that I will whisk on a little purple on top of that. This is obviously, I'm in a blue mood today, aren't I? Blues and purples and reds. So now I have broken up those large stones or droplets with the little droplets. So that is what is called a traditional stone pattern right there. And I'm going to leave that on one end of my fabric. And then I'm going to sort of do something else in the middle and then something else down here so that when we pull the fabric up, you'll see three different prints on one piece. Let's see. In the middle. You put some more droplets. And I'm going to do what's called a gale get through those. It's Turkish, it means go and come. And you can see I'm going away, coming back, going away, coming back, going away, and coming back. Down here, I'm going to use a little different color. 
I teach uh, some workshops locally for kids at the schools, you know. One of the things all the little girls love to do is a heart. I'm going to show you how you can just sort of make some imagery. Um, like, for instance, if you pull through that little dot, you have a perfect little heart. These could be teased into my little leaf shapes that I'm so fond of right now. So I'm just using, I'm drawing right on the surface of the bath. But you can see that I'm not totally in control. Everything is moving according to itself. So, and my heart got really big, Frida. I'm going to have to. Yes, it did. It did. But that's okay. Okay, so now we have sort of a traditional pattern here. Oh, I'm just. That's okay. We have a stone pattern down there. And I'm going to put a little more color on one end. And we are going to uh, pull this print. It's probably going to be a little pale, but that's okay. And my gel get got big. Maybe I'll, I'm going to redo my gel get. Just do it some more so we have concentration. Yeah, we'll do it some more. Put purple this time. There we go. And there it's spreading again. It's magic. You can just make make art, and if you don't like it, make some more right on top of it. I'm gonna do it this way this time. There. There. Now we're happy. Okay. Artist always has to be happy. We can't stand it if we're not happy. Okay. It takes two. <laughs> Frida's gonna take one end, and I'm gonna take the other end. And we're going to position ourselves over the tank. So you want to come right down to the end, Frida. This is pretty much cut. Hold it way up and let me see. Okay, now you, you good? need to pull it toward you just a little bit. All okay. right. And we just go down in the middle and let that lay there. And you can see the print starting to happen. And, and because I have soaked this in the aluminum sulfate water, the alum water, just like you make pickles out of, um, the paint sticks to the fabric or the paint sticks to the paper. Now, we're what we're doing now is we're seeing if there are any areas that aren't wet, we kind of pat yeah. them. We like to do a pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're patting on our art. That's good. I believe that puppy is good to go. It's going to be pale, but we'll get the idea. All right, and then we pull up and we meet each other. Let's show it, Frida. Come oh, right yeah. together with me. Okay. Okay. There you see the. So there's the traditional stone. And let's flip it. And on this side, we have the Galgat. And on this side, we have the big leaf shapes. Okay. Then we have to rinse it. We're rinsing, you go under. We're rinsing the residual methyl cellulose off the print. And the paint just stays right where it's supposed to go. And then we have to hang it up. But in this case, we're just going to hang it over the end there because our cameraman might get all wet and sloshy if we had try to hang it where he's standing. Okay. <laughs> so where are we hanging it then? I tell you what, give me, give me both ends of it. Okay. Okay. Dump it out. Very good. We're going to come right here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. So that is just hydro printmaking. Well, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you next time on Eye on Arts. Just touchdown, another show can. Thank you very much. <laughs>